Hey there, how you doing? Charlie Winters here with horse racing and football tips for Saturday the 21st of October. Well, it's possibly, in my opinion, and I know there's a bit of quality there, but possibly the worst Saturday's racing in ages. I know there's been some abandonments, but it was dreadful before that. Um, I've never been a fan of Ascot. You might think, what's he on about? Fan of Ascot? But um, I can never seem to really get it right. Um... So my view of Ascot is they've gone for the inner course on the round course. Um, that only slightly favours me. Well, I don't know anything really about Ascot. So with it being the track being on the inner, I, w I would say that it's a bit tighter than, than the main track. So that's like Edgemi going for one of the horses that races prominently. So let me get into it. So um, I've only spent £8 something. Sorry, not eight pounds something. It's yes, yeah, right. It is eight pounds something. So I've had a, a six pence each way. Lucky sixty three, and I've had to <laughs> scout around for these horses. Um, it's dreadful. Anyway, let's get into it. But I, I do really like the look of them. I'll be honest. Um, so it's six pence each way. Lucky sixty three comes to seven pound fifty six, and then at, at the time I had a pound left over. I think it were. So I had an each way single on one of the horses. So let me get into it. So the first selection is Rohan. At seven to one in the 150 at Ascot, paying four places instead of three. This horse hasn't got loads to find. However, I believe the course knowledge of this horse, or its ability to act on this course, and it goes in the going. It ran a cracking race last time. I think it's obviously it it peaked for that race. I think it's still got another top performance in it. And um, there are very few question marks over this horse compared to some of the rest. It is stepping up in class, but I believe it was a handicap it won last time. But it, it won it off something like top weight, and it won it very decisively. In what well, I say decisively, it, it finished extremely powerfully. So um, I do like the look of Rohan. The second selection is Above the Curve at nine to one in the two twenty-five at Ascot, paying five places instead of three. Well, A.P. O'Brien, I believe, has got two in this race. This is Joseph O'Brien's. I think A.P. O'Brien. It should have the front runner, a uh, big price, 100 to 1. I think this horse um, that I've tipped above the curve will sit right on the a length off the pace, right behind this horse. Um, I think it'll be perfect for it. It's guaranteed to light the ground, which is going to be on the slow side. Uh, racing prominently, I believe that it will suit this horse or benefit this horse because... Um, um, I'm just guessing here that the inner track is going to be tighter. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be a tight track. It's going to be a tighter track than than they would normally do on the outer. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And I think there are question marks over quite a few. Even though it's a top race, I think there are some question marks stuff there with some on the ground, some on over this distance. So that's my reasoning behind that one. The third selection is Glorious Angel at 15 to 2 in the 340 at Catrick, paying four places instead of three. This is five furlongs. As you're well aware, at Catrick on soft ground, they come to the near side. Um, <clears throat> this horse is drawn, I believe, something like 9 of 11, something like that. Um, it can lead and it, it stays on over further. So if, if you can get, a, you're not going to get an easy lead, but if you can get a fairly comfortable lead, which is pretty much the same thing. Um, you could see it being very difficult to kick out the frame or even win. Fourth selection is Paco's Pride at 72 in the 12 minutes past four at Wolverhampton, paying four places instead of three. This horse is extremely interesting. First of all, bear in mind, I picked these a while back now. So um, I believe it's Roger Varian's off a rating of 57. He hasn't got many rated at 57. This horse started its career uh, by racing um, towards the back of the pack over on the all-weather. So basically it was midfield or worse in pretty much all its races. And you know how they do to get his handicap mark. So he got a handicap mark of about 60, I think it were. Uh, no, about 65, I think it were. So what's happened is since then, it's it's only been, um, it's only ran on the turf since. So in my opinion, I'm wondering if this is an all-weather horse so they ran it down the field in the all weather. Um, they've got a handicap mark based on how they normally get handicap marks, running it down the field, leaning handicap mark. But they've gone, they've gone from a leaning handicap mark potentially to then having six months on the turf, which hopefully it doesn't like the turf. 
So therefore, its handicap mark has dropped even more. Now, it is interesting, the fact that um, when running on the turf, it was never held up or midfield. It was always in touch. So I find that interesting as well. So I, I personally think that this could be saved as an all-weather horse. It could be extremely well handicapped because they were handicapped in the normal way by in its first four runs, five runs, it attained its handicap mark by obviously being placed towards the back and running on late, all that kind of stuff. And then it, it ran on the turf, and hopefully it doesn't like the, it doesn't or didn't like the turf. So therefore, it's it's I, I think it could potentially be extremely well handicapped horse, or it's a bad one. That's basically it. It's a flip of a coin, really. So I think some two. It may not look like an each way prize because I think it's got an excellent chance of winning. And if it's a very unstable fancy, I think this could be extremely short. The next selection is Awal at 7-1 to one in the 4.25 at Ascot, paying six places instead of four. This horse is probably, of the date, the form pick. Uh, this is drawn high, which I, w I do believe it will fancy. Uh, it will favour, sorry. Um, it absolutely loves soft ground. And this, well, it, it loves heavy ground. But um, it's currently described as soft. But I think there are showers forecast. I think it will be between soft and heavy. This horse is crying out for this. I do like the Simon Crisford stable. They also finished second in the Lincoln on this horse on heavy ground. Um, and that was the last time James Dore rode this horse. Now he's back on it in this race. So I find that interesting. So maybe they've aimed two races for the season. And he's going to be on, on it for both uh, both rides. So I find that interesting. And that is technically, although it's, what is it, 30-odd runners in the field, form-wise, that is my nap of the day. And the final selection is Harbour Vision at 9-1 to one in the 450 at Wolverhampton, paying four places instead of three. This ran a bit too wide last time from an outside draw, and it ran too keen. It's, it's from store six this time. If it gets to the front and gets a fairly easy lead, it could be hard to peg back. So those are all the selections on the horses. I'm going to get onto the football now. So let me just scroll down, and you might see. Right, here we are. So these are basically doubles and trebles. I've had three one pound doubles and a two pound treble. So basically a fiver. It's a player to get sent off in each match. So we've had one in the Bradford and Wrexham match, Stockport and Grimsby, and Mansfield and Forest Green. There is a high likelihood of Mansfield Town being called off tomorrow. So I, I don't live too far from there. And um, it's been absolutely bouncing off the floor all day. Um, it's quite funny because next door's garden's actually flooded. They've got like, it's like sunk down a bit and like it's got concrete around it. I looked out the window, it's just, it's just watered and you can't see any grass and there's, a, there's just a little bush um, popping out. So I'm going to get onto something else in a minute. So there's the Awal. So that's what I had left in my account. So 53, 53 pence each way. This is a builder bet that uh, they gave me a five pound free builder bet. Um, with Skybet. So what I've had is, I, I do think Arsenal will win. Um, so what I've had is, I've had Arsenal to win, but basically if Arsenal win, I'm guessing that Chelsea might, they can be a bit more if I'm being fair. So I think Moses Casido and Enzo Fernandez could both get booked. So it's a free fiver. I wouldn't normally, I'm not recommending having a putting five pound on this. It's a free bet. This is what I've had. It makes 90 quid. Can't grumble at that. And there's another bet I want to show you about as well. Not that one. That's from that pre-season one. It's this one up here. I was given another free bet. <laughs> so, um, these aren't tips either. I'm just going to make it transparent what I've actually put on. Uh, this is from the other day. <clears throat> Basically, I'm shouting these two horses on for a place. So obviously, Rohan I've had anyway, but I've had Colt Coltrane in the 115 at Ascot. I am not tipping it up, by the way, because I think there's currently eight runners. And um, I wouldn't back this horse. It was just, it was just, I, I just put the free bet on. But obviously, I, I do fancy Rohan. Obviously, you've got twelve to one there. Uh, so that's that bet. So let's go on to the football bet. So the actual goals, 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 which you're all, all aware of, is so it's a six pound treble over two and a half goal treble, three pound over three and a half goals treble, and a one pound over four and a half goals treble. It's the same matches. So it's Norwich versus Leeds. Gillingham versus Notts County and Man City versus Brighton. So if we get the over two and a half goals trouble, which I think we've only done once this year so far, I think we've done it once. I'm sure we have. 
<clears throat> um, I might be wrong. It, it could just have some close calls. It returns £17.80. Well, we've only placed something like £23 anyway. So you're nearly getting all your money back for the day just if this basic football bet comes up. And obviously, it, these other bets make a lot more. 40 quid for the next one and £84 for the next one. So, yeah, that's it. So if you can give me a like or a subscribe, that'd be absolutely great. Um, obviously, Friday... Friday was showing a very small profit if you managed to get the same price as I did. The one that made the day was the 8 to 1. I don't know if it came second or third. It doesn't really matter in the end. It just, just came placed. Unfortunately, we couldn't get one in the first race of the day that we had. Uh, that would have been a nice 5 pence each way treble. Um, 8 to 1, 14s. And, but unfortunately, but unfor I'll tell you what. What I did notice is I think that Johnny Mason nearly fell off slings with two. Um, you couldn't see properly from behind the trees. And then when you could, it looks like she was just about to fall off. She didn't. And then finally, Cuban cigar. What was that all about? Um, st stayed in the stalls. It would tail off all the way around. Although I did notice it finished quite strongly in the end. So, um, yeah, interesting that one. I, I don't get the ride that was given. So, and the, the, the betting was a bit odd for that as well. Because it, it was 15 to 2, 6 to 1. It drifted to, I think, 12. Then it was backed in again. All right. So I couldn't quite work that out. But I, don't, I just don't think that the, uh, the, they actually fancied that horse yes, uh, today. Friday. So anyway, I'm off now. So the very best of luck. Charlie Winters over and out. Cheers, mate.